sometimes when the stock market goes down, it brings some really good stocks, good companies down with it as they all kind of move together. So it can create some buying opportunities. And today we're going to look at uh, undervalued stocks that are you know, maybe are a good buying opportunity, but are also have this long-term dividend aristocrat uh, membership as part of that. And for dividend aristocrats, that, there's some criteria around that are very stringent. You need to be an S&P 500 member, so 500 of the largest uh, U.S. market cap stocks. You have to have 25 years of paying dividends, 25 straight years of dividends. And not only that, you have to raise your dividend every year for 25 straight years. There's only like 65 stocks that make that criteria. So it's very, very stringent. These are kind of like the blue chip of blue chip stocks. But we're going to look at some that might be looking at from value measures. They might be undervalued. So we're going to look at those. I'm going to share four, with, four of, uh, stocks with you that I think will, might be a, uh, something you want to look at closer. Coming up on Investing Education with me, Mr. B. <music> Welcome to the channel where we help you to learn fast so you can become a confident and successful investor. If that sounds interesting to you. Check out in the description below our free courses and uh, really on sale big comp comprehensive courses as well too. Okay, so let's look at some dividend aristocrats. We're going to pare down this list to four uh, based on their price to book value is our first starting measure. And then we're going to look closer at each of these stocks. And by price to book, we're looking at the stock price relative to a company's underlying assets or book value. If they liquidated the company, you know, kind of what it's worth would be. And that's a good valuation measure as far as trying to find stocks on our discount or undervalued stocks. You know, value investors like Warren Buffett, for example, would start looking at things like price to book to sort out stocks that might be you know, down in price, maybe too far, it might be good for a comeback. And then if we pair that with the ability that's going to keep paying dividends, that the likelihood of paying dividends is very high, uh, we have the ability to maybe buy a low and have the stock price appreciate, and it's going to pay us dividends along the way, especially if we want to buy and hold a stock for maybe a longer period of time. So with that, let's look at four dividend stocks real quick here and give you an idea of some things you might want to look at even closer to see if it's the right decision for you. Okay, the first company we're going to look at is Aflac uh, as part of these dividend aristocrats. You might know Aflac from the you know funny commercials with the duck in it. If you live in the United States, you see their commercials. And Aflac sells insurance. You know, in fact, if we click under what we do, the what Aflac does is they actually sell supplemental insurance. Is what they do. So you know, insurance companies that sell life, you know, health insurance, or really primary health insurance, Aflac would be supplemental or extra insurance a company can buy for their employees. So let's look at Aflac as a stock and its price to book in terms of is it maybe a good value. So we're going to put in the, uh, the ticker here. We're just going to go simply into, uh, whoops, we're just going to simply go into um, the um, <laughs> into Yahoo Finance. Or we're going to try to be simply able to type. Let's see if I can type. Here we are at Aflac. And what we're going to look at it is the price to book value. And we're looking for a number below 3.0 is tends to be a good value. Anything lower than that's even better. Below 2.0 would be really, really good. And 1.0 is harder to find, but you know, something below 2.0 is really good as far as a price relative to its, its assets. So we'll go under statistics here for Aflac. Um, I'm gonna clean off that ad. And if we go under statistics, you go on down under these valuation members, so you can find price to book right here. And you can see its current price to book value, uh, and it's a little bit of historical price to book value, is 1.21. That's very attractive. 1.0 and less is like the holy grail. <laughs> you know, something to really be looking for if you can find that. But for considering stocks that pay 25 straight years of dividends and raise those dividends to be included in the dividend aristocrats, to find stuff at around a 1.21 established company is a, is a good stock to start maybe taking a look at. So 1.21. So that, that would might be something on the list. Let's look at it, their dividend here real quick. I'm just going on down on the right hand, dividends and splits over here. And two big numbers I want to look at. One is their payout ratio, look with anticipated forward payout ratio, or excuse me, dividend yield. You know, what you can expect to get on that dividend is 2.67. You know, a little bit of right around the average of the S&P 500, it's about 2.20 uh, or so. So a good solid dividend, oops, excuse me, at 2.67. And the payout ratio is like, well, is the stock really suffering? Is the price down because the stock is really suffering? And are they going to have a hard time paying their dividend? And you can see the payout ratio of 20%. We like to see that number being less than 80%, paying out 
uh, dividends out of their net income or earnings. And they've got a lot of cash in the bank, $6.7 billion in there, Aflac does. So you know they're, they're not going to want to come off the dividend list. Last thing dividend companies want to do is cut their dividends. So you know this is it looks like a really good safe dividend, good safe dividend payout, solid dividend 2.6, and a nice price to book at that 1.21. So Aflac might be one to take a look at. Uh, another one here is uh, People's United Bank. You know, uh, they have about 400 locations up in the Northeast. They're uh, just about to do a, a merger with M&T Bank, so they're you know doing some you know merger. So they do retail banks, but they do uh, personal banking. You know, like you know regular bank stuff. They do business banking um, with financing stuff, and they do wealth management, like you know, helping people with investing and all that. So you know, a variety of things that they offer, but they're mostly known as just a regular old you know retail type bank. So let's look at their uh, look. Look, let's look at their numbers. And I'm just going to go right here instead of going to the summary. I'm just going to go right here where it's on this part. PBC, uh, PB, uh, People's Bank, kind of uh, People's United Financial Corporation. That's the holding name for People's Bank. Most people know it as People's Bank, but a lot of investment, or excuse me, a lot of financial companies are holding companies. So People's United uh, is what you'd look for. PBCT to dig deeper into them. Their price to book uh, is at a 1.18, you know, so another super low price to book at a 1.18. So well below that 3.0 threshold to start looking at stuff, well below even 2.0, so that's very attractive. Let's see how their dividend's doing. So uh, we saw with Affleck, they have that low dividend payout ratio. Uh, now if we look at the yield for People's Bank, 3.59, you know, forward-looking dividend yield, you know, that's the kind of number you could compare to like, a, you know, other dividends, the higher the numbers, the better, or looking at like your savings rates at around 1% or so in a savings rate. You know, that, that yearly dividend of, of 3.9, 3.59 is very attractive, especially with that low price to book. And they're at a 52% payout ratio, 52.34. Again, we're looking for that to be ideally under 80, under 50 is even is excellent. So this is pretty solid. Again, they've got a lot of money in the bank, 10 0.98 billion, and unlike a lot of companies, they only got 2.29, 2.3 billion of debt. So they got a lot of cash, not much long-term debt, low payout ratio, um, and a really nice dividend. You know, uh, and bank stocks can do better with rising interest rates environments. By the way, so People's um, United Financial in Incorporated again, it's your own portfolio. I'm not making recommendations. I'm just giving you ideas and doing some education on the way. You know, that's kind of the disclaimer here. Look at the disclaimer the description. You know, for more information on the disclaimers. Um, so that might, that looks attractive. The third one of our four is Chubb. Chubb Insurance. Funny kind of name, but they're a big insurance company. They're, I think they're more famous and known for their business insurance. They do family stuff. They also sell through agents or brokers who resell their insurance products. But you've got businesses, you've got individuals, and you've got uh, agents and brokers as well. And they offer a variety of things. Where Aflac was primarily supplemental insurance, you know, basically health insurance that supplements other health insurances. You know, uh, Chubb gets into a lot of stuff. They got home, for individuals. They got home insurance, auto insurance, boats, liability, travel insurance. You know, cyber crime, <laughs> cyber insurance for business. Same thing, getting the cybers, workers' compensation, accident and health, marine. You know, type insurance, insure boats and stuff. You know, ships, container ships, and then you got life insurance and stuff too. So a more diverse product line from Chubb than let's say Affleck, if you're looking at those two insurance companies. So if we go over here, we're just gonna go into the quote lookup and we're gonna put in for Chubb, which is uh, CB, uh, or you can just, if you're not sure, you can just type in the name, start typing in Chubb, it'll find it too, at least in Yahoo Finance. And I'm going right off to the side here because I'll bring me right to my statistics area where I'm kinda wanna look up things anyways. Otherwise, you can go right at the top and put it right here to start at the quote thing and then go to statistics to find some of these numbers we're looking at. All right, so let's look at Chubb, right? So we're gonna look at Chubb, excuse me there. Their price to book, 1.48. So again, well below that 3.0, certainly below 2.0. So for an established 25 years of paying dividends plus raising dividends years plus to even be included on that dividend aristocrat list, they're right there at a one uh, on that list and a 1.48 attractive from their price to book uh, you know, rating. If we look at, uh, again, let's take a peek at their dividend. A uh, lower dividend, you know, so we looked at the, the you know, Affleck would pay you a little better dividend, that People's Bank certainly paid a real nice dividend, but this pays you a 1.58 dividend yield. You know, that doesn't mean it's not a good stock, it just means it pays lower dividend yield. Maybe you have more upside with the price appreciation. Um, 
And if you look at the safety of it, not only is that a dividend aristocrat, but a 16.5% payout ratio, you know, that's pretty outstanding, right? I mean, that's they're going to pay that dividend forever. They, they've got that money coming in. I mean, that looks very solid. Anything can happen, of course, but that looks very solid. Um, the cash on hand is $4.8 billion, $20 billion in debt. They're carrying more debt. And actually, one thing that is a little concerning is their current ratio. Current ratio is looking at things like... Um, your ability to pay your current debts or your current liabilities, uh, things are coming due within less than a year. And we want to see that number above 1.0. That means you're, 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 you're able to cover those current things that are coming. 0.35 is actually very low. So that's something to you know, maybe dig a little further into, but a little concerning there as far as that low current ratio. But again, companies, the last thing they want to do is cut their dividend. They'll take on more debt, actually, to, to you know, not cut or reduce or eliminate that dividend. So maybe Chubb has done a little bit of that. So something to look at a little bit further. But again, you know, 1.58 you know, gives you a dividend, super safe dividend for, as far as a payout ratio. I would look closer at that, um, that debt. You know, that would be something to take a little closer look at. And then our last one on our list is something you might already be buying, which is uh, Franklin Templeton. Uh, uh, actually, it's on their tickle symbol, Ben, for Ben Franklin, if you see Ben Franklin there in their logo. And they're a big uh, mutual fund, uh, exchange trade fund type company, uh, is what they do. Um, and you can see they're big. They've been around a long time, you know, 70 years of asset management experience with, you know, managing assets for wealthy individuals. Then later, as mutual funds came in and exchange trade funds came in, they did that $121.5 trillion of uh, assets under management. So they're big. In fact, they're very well known for their global investing and international investing. Um, and they've been around, uh, and, oh, and if we look at some of their stuff, equity would be like stock. So you can see they have a variety of different types of stock mutual funds and investment funds. Fixed income is bonds, so they have a variety in that too. Multi-asset solutions, you know, so looking at different you know, combinations of assets and alternative assets too, like hedge funds and private equity, real estate, infrastructure, a lot of different stuff. So they've got their hands doing a lot of stuff. And they've been around since 1947, so a long time. And you can see they bought out some companies too as well. And Franklin Templeton is really known for its international investment. That's a real strength of theirs. A lot of people like them because they, they have strength inter for investing outside the United States. But that's given them some exposure to geopolitical events, especially things around Russia and China, for example. And that might be depressing the price of their stock, which gives them a more attractive price to their relative assets or things under management, you know, their value as far as that goes and a low price to book value. So let's take a look at their price to book value. As I mentioned that their um, ticker symbol is Ben for Ben Franklin. Um, a penny saved is a penny earned. I think that's 99.9% .9 sure that's Ben Franklin. So Franklin Resources is the holding group, uh, but most people know them as, uh, you know, Franklin, um, you know, Franklin Templeton. Uh, Franklin, you know, Franklin brought out Templeton strong a long time ago, um, is the idea. It was the thing behind that. We'll get rid of some pop-up ads. And price to book, 1.31. So for, again, a company that's been around since 1945, under, you know, doing that uh, wealth management and mutual funds and all that, uh, especially that strong international presence, might be a buying opportunity as their stock price might be, in the short time, depressed. In fact, if we look at price relative to their earnings, you know, if we're around, you know, below like 12 or 14, 16, you know, being in the eights here is very attractive from an earnings standpoint, uh, from a price to earnings, just seeing that number pop out, um, you know, pop out at me. Um, uh, actually, and they're, you can see they're down 8%. Uh, almost 9% over the last you know, year versus you know, about up 6% for the broader S&P 500. So they're down for sure. Let's look at that dividend. You know, um, they are at a 4.26. So they're the, of the four, they're at the highest. The People's Bank was a high 3.95, but 4.26 is a nice dividend. So, and you know, might they cut the dividend? Let's look at that payout ratio. Uh, can they pay it? Is it less than 80%? Yeah, it's at about 30%, 29.89%. You know, they can generate you know, money by their fees and things they charge on their mutual funds. And, um, you know, and they're, again, strong internationally. So they might be in you know, a part where they really got pulled down with a lot of other stuff. In particular, as investors looking at their exposure for, for Franklin 
resources out in places like with some geopolitical strife around uh, China, you know, being clamping down on more of their technology companies and being listed on the U.S. stock exchanges and just other stuff with China and certainly with Russia uh, invading Ukraine and Vladimir Putin's doing all that stuff has depressed this stock for sure. I, I'm, you know, would look at that. Uh, uh, again, current ratio, we want that number to be above 1.0, as we were talking about the last one, 3.68. Wow. You know, no problem paying their debts uh, a, as far as that goes. In fact, they've got more cash than they do with long-term, you know, debt, you know, in the bank. So they could, you can see why they've got a good, you know, uh, book value as far as the actual book value. And then relative to its price coming down, it makes it attractive as far as maybe a strong company that's fallen on a little bit of a, you know, hard times as far as their stock price being down. But if they, do, if they don't cut their dividend, which they won't because they want to stay on that dividend aristocrat list, that would be very, very unusual. You know, you're already locking in at a 4.26% interest or 4.26% payout on dividends. Um, and you got that without, and then everything that price appreciates is gravy. And if it goes down in price for a while, that's fine. If you're going to be a buy and hold investor, you know, this, you know, you're going to hold anyway. So that's, that's Franklin uh, Templeton. Uh, and known as Franklin Resources as the holding company. So there you have it. You have four stocks that you can do your more due diligence on and see what seems interesting to you. One thing that's interesting, they're all kind of in the financial sector. I mean, these were the lowest four as far as looking at price to book below this 1.50 threshold uh, that I set looking at these dividend aristocrats. So something to take a look at. Um, as far as, you know, some good, good, deep value uh, type companies that are not just companies that you never heard of. These are well-established brand name country com companies uh, that uh, might be at a good, about attractive buying opportunity. All right, with that, I wish you all the best of luck. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget that the subscribe button. Do check out in the description below free courses. Uh, courses on big sales, so take a look at that as far as investing education with MrB.com. Uh, and uh, hope to see you in a course or see you in another video as we continue our learning about investing, investing in the stock market.